my boyfriend loves to wear a jacket. I love to wear a jacket. And you're gonna hear that word way too much today. I'm just too intrigued not to talk about it. It has the most like delicious looking squish to it. I don't know, I wanna grab this one and squeeze it. Which jacket should be the jacket for me? This is also known as Nora. Hello, you guys. I'm Nora, and you're watching, also known as Nora Knits. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me today. I have a, another really fun pattern roundup for you today. As you can probably tell, I'm getting in the cozy season. And so my mind is definitely starting to brew up a little bit more some of the cozy ideas of things that I want to make this winter. Of course, I'm never going to have the time to make all of the things that I want to, but one of the things that has been on my list for a good while now is a shacket. And so in honor of a shacket pattern roundup, I am actually wearing my little shacket here today. Uh, this is one that I just bought at Walmart and then bedazzled with my little jewels here. So it's if you've never heard the word shacket before, basically it's just a combination of shirt and jacket. Shacket. Uh, and basically it's it's really convenient if you live in an area like I live in New England where you have days that are freezing cold, you have days that are going to be a little bit warmer, and I always love having something like this lighter layering piece by the door. I like it because I usually go for something that's a little bit more oversized in a jacket, and I can wear a sweater underneath or a hoodie underneath or even still fit a bigger winter coat on top if I have to, and then have this on if I'm just out and about and, and don't wanna wear my winter coat the whole time. So I like a jacket for those reasons. It's basically a light jacket or really heavy shirt is the way to think about it. Typically, if you're buying a jacket with that sort of branding at the store, you're looking at something that looks like your typical flannel button-up shirt, but is actually lined with, usually it's a sort of like Sherpa or fleece lining. And yeah, they're just really fun. My boyfriend loves to wear a jacket. I love to wear a jacket. And you're gonna hear that word way too much today. So if you're intrigued by this idea of knitting a jacket, then definitely stick around. As I said, I have been wanting to knit myself a jacket for a good while now. And so basically as I have been thinking about knitting one, I've just been saving patterns as I see them. Um, and so that's the list that I've compiled for you today. However, I do actually have even more sort of on in, in the theme and the wheelhouse of that vibe of a shacket, I have a whole shacket Ravelry bundle that you could take a peek at if these aren't exactly your style. I do have some more just jacket-like knits over in that bundle. However, I did pull today the most shackety of the shacket patterns that I have. So I've got 10 patterns for you. Let's go ahead and dive right in. I haven't organized these in any particular order. And when I'm mentioning the sizes as well as the um, the price of these patterns. I am mostly going to be generalizing those terms just to make things a little bit easier, but you should see the card on the screen that has more specific information and all of the dollar amounts that I, I am going to be talking about today, the cost of the patterns, I will be discussing in the terms of US dollars. So without further ado, let's get shaggedy. The first pattern that I've pulled for you is called the Boxy Cardigan Chunky. Now, most of these patterns are actually branded as either a cardigan or a jacket. So only a few of them are meant to be this jacket, but they were all in this vibe of what I was wanting to knit, which by the way, my vision for my jacket is going to be using a boucle yarn that I thrifted. And my ultimate goal is to find something that really does resemble something that you could buy at the store in the way of something that has a folded down collar, some buttons in the front. I would love some pocket accessories and then any other little details um, that just make it a little bit more rugged or, or, or just more in theme of what I think of when I picture a jacket. 
So this is the Boxy Cardigan Chunky. This is by Friday Knits. This one comes in eight sizes. And the finished bust circumference is around 34 to 62 inches or about 87 to 158 centimeters. This one says that it is knit in a bulky yarn and that it's knit top down. So this cardigan is something that looks like it's knit in a garter stitch. So this seems like nice and easy because of course, anytime you're gonna be knitting something that's split up the middle, unless you are going to be steaking it or knitting in the round and then cutting the work after reinforcing the front, you are going to have to knit flat, which does mean that if you want a stockinette piece, you're going to have to be purling, knit purl every other row. So something that's garter stitch is going to be a great option. If you aren't so keen on purling, you're going to be able to just knit the whole way. This one to me does have a very shirt-like feel, but because the yarn is a bulky yarn, that's what's giving it that more jacket-like vibe about it. So it's not necessarily that it has the details that a typical jacket would have, just more so that it is a shirt knit up on a chunkier yarn. Something that's really nice that I read in the Ravelry description for this one is that it does actually say that it caters to both beginners as well as experienced knitters in the way that this is constructed. And a really nice feature is that this one does come with video tutorials. I'm not sure if those are behind a paywall, but it does mention on the Ravelry page that there are video tutorials that you can follow. So if you are maybe new to knitting something outside of an in-the-round project, or you're interested in getting into these sort of cardigans and jacket styles, but you're intimidated by the more details, like you do have to deal with a button band and things like that, those can be a little bit trickier, then I think this would be a great option just because of the way that they're advertising it is that it is beginner friendly. So that's the Boxy Cardigan Chunky by Friday Knits. And it looks like that pattern is going to cost you about $8.27 on Ravelry. The next shackety pattern that I have on my list here is called the Maras by Reavive. This one is knit in a DK weight yarn. It comes in eight sizes with a range from about 43 to 67 inches, which is about 109 to 169 centimeters. It does say that this one is knit from the bottom up. So if you're someone who's not interested in knitting from the bottom up, then I would avoid it. I have a love-hate relationship with bottom-up garments, but I think particularly in a cardigan, I actually don't mind it because you can just sort of hit the ground running with knitting flat and straight and not have to worry about knitting the back and then knitting the front pieces and then knitting the sides. It just makes it a little bit easier to get started, which for me means that I'm more likely to stick with it when I get towards the sleeves and everything. And I'm like, ah, man, I already put in all this work. I might as well just keep going. <laughs> but if you're not interested in knitting bottom up, then this one might not be right for you. Some of the really nice details that I do like about this one is that it says that the hem and the cuffs are double folded, which for me gives it that really substantial, more jacket-like cardigan. So with that double folding on the edges, you're getting a lot more of a dense fabric. And I think that that looks really nice for something that's going to play the role of a jacket. Something else that I like about this one is actually that it has this waffle texture. So I feel like the waffle gives it just that little bit of an extra cozier cabiny vibe. And personally, I also just tend to think that knits that have a little texture to them give them this sort of upscaled, more expensive look. So for me, if I'm looking at something that I want to wear as a jacket, I don't know about you, but I have way fewer jackets than I do shirts. They're, they tend to be things that I, I go back to over and over year after year. So I do kind of like the idea of it looking like an investment luxury piece and just having that little bit of an extra, I don't know, a little extra detail with the waffle. I'm into it. Now, this one does have the one of the features that I am looking for personally in my shacket knit, and that is the folded collar. Now, something that I'm learning about myself is that I think I'm a little bit particular about how a collar is done. For me personally, this one in the front is just a little bit too spread out, as in the collar starts on kind of either side of that button band. And for me, then, when it's closed, there's just a little bit too much of a gap. Now, I can't imagine I'm actually ever going to close mine, <laughs> but that's just something that I wanted to note in case you kind of felt the same way. 
overall, I really do think that this is a beautiful piece and I could definitely imagine this being knit up in a more rustic yarn, something that's maybe a neutral brown or a green. And I think it would be a great kind of layering piece. This one for me is reading a touch more shirt-like than it is jacket, but I could definitely see this having a place in your wardrobe if you're someone who likes to still look really put together when you're getting comfy and cozy running out and running errands. So I think if you're doing this in a little bit more of a darker, muted, less saturated, neutral color, I think this would look really great with just jeans. You could wear a turtleneck underneath it. I think it would look fantastic with some tall boots. So I think it would give you a really refined look while still being in your comfy cozies. So that's the Morris sweater by Reavive, and that one looks like it's going to cost you about $6.50 on Ravelry. Okay, next up I have a little bit of a wild card thrown in here because I'm just too intrigued not to talk about it. This is what they're calling in English the curly cuff jacket, and this is by... Nina Ruth of that, um, I think it's, I don't know if it's pronounced Riley Ruth, but that's how I read it in my head on Instagram. And I have to tell you, this girl is, she's on top of things. I realized recently that just about every accessory that I had saved in my Instagram sort of inspiration was by her. <laughs> and I just think that she has a really interesting taste. Now, the one thing that I'll mention here is that the size range on this is, is limited. There's only two sizes available for this one, and they're a difference of a 45 and 51 inch finished bust circumference that comes out to about 115 to 129 centimeters. So super limited, but the thing that really caught my attention with this one is, first of all, the look of it is just dead on. It's nailing it. It is this super recognizable kind of Sherpa jacket look. It really does look like a jacket to me. And I think part of the reason for that is, first of all, it's felted. I have never gotten into felting something, but I can see how in a jacket format, this would be such a good move to make. Now, she does also have mittens in this same sort of like they're, they're kind of sisters, these patterns, where it's a felted exterior. But then the really cool thing about these patterns is that they use the boucle on the sort of trimmings to really look like one of those just little Sherpa jackets, you know, the like corduroy or the denim with the little Sherpa collar. So cute, so 90s. But I do love that about this pattern. So I feel like when it comes to the felting thing, you've got a lot of variables going on already. So I know I would be kind of freaked out to then start going in and playing around with the gauge and everything. However, when you are felting, you do have to make sure that all of your math is kind of working out, that you're knitting this on gauge and then felting it and it's felting properly. It's a little bit of a science anyway. So part of me says like you already have to put in the work to make sure that everything's going to come out the right size anyway. Why not just try and knit this in your size if yours is not being represented in the two that are available? So this is just one that I'm way too intrigued by to let go, but I definitely of course had to acknowledge the fact that it is super limited in the sizing. So that's the Curly Cuff Jacket by Nina Ruth, and it looks like that one's gonna cost you about $9.31 on Ravelry. Now, if we're really getting into these jackets that truly do look like a shirt and really are representing what I was kind of looking for when I sought out on my jacket journey, then this is a pattern I have to include. This is called the Gold Dust Shacket by Morale McCree. And I mean, it, it's called a shacket. So she knows that th this is, I didn't make it up, guys. <laughs> a shacket is a thing. So this one comes in nine sizes with a range from 36 to about 67 inches or 91 to 171 centimeters in that finished bust circumference. And it says that it's knit in a worsted weight. It does say that she used a boucle held with a mohair. Now, I'm having some mixed feelings about this pattern because looking at it, it's exactly what I want. It has the collar details. It truly is a 
shacket. It has the pocket that really makes it um, reminiscent of a shirt. This one also is super cool because it has invisible side seam pockets, which also means that it is knit flat and then seamed together. I don't have a problem with that. And I think particularly in something that's going to play the role of a jacket to have the additional stability of actually going in and reinforcing just everything with those seams, I don't think is a bad idea. And, and honestly, for me, when it comes to knitting a cardigan or something, again, it has to be knit flat anyway. Why not just knit it in pieces? I don't think that there's a huge difference for me personally between just knitting something flat and then seaming it together. When I look at this pattern, like I said, it has all those details that I am looking for, but for some reason, it's just not really clicking for me that I'm like, oh, that's the one. And I actually think for me, it's the yarn that was used. The, the yarn has a lot of drape to it. And so in all of the, the project photos that I'm seeing, this really does have, I mean, it has drape to it. <laughs> it kind of is hanging there where I'm picturing something that has a little bit more structure, a little bit more sturdiness. Now, I know that for me personally, I can get that with the, the yarn that I'm planning to knit my shacket, whatever it be. Um, I can get that fabric just by knitting it at a slightly more dense gauge. So I'm trying to remove it from my head that whatever I'm looking at is, is going to wind up being that way when it comes to drapiness, because I know that that's something I can control just with my gauge and the fabric that I'm getting. However, that's my number one hang up with this pattern that I'm like, maybe that's not quite right. And then how disappointed would I feel if I get to the end of the pattern and realize it's something about the construction that is giving it this more drapey look rather than the fabric itself. So I'm a little bit torn on this one. I love it. I mean, it's a beautiful pattern. I also think that if I were to knit this one, I'd probably shorten it a little bit. I do prefer the kind of cut of say like a bomber jacket style. I, I would prefer my shacket to be a little bit shorter, not short, not like cropped, but I do think, and again, I think it all depends on the fabric and the drape, but some of these I'm feeling like I could almost call that a shirt dress. <laughs> Those are really my main kind of issues with it. Otherwise I do love, I mean, it's got pockets, like automatic 10 points. <laughs> we love pockets. I love the way that the collar is sitting on this one. So this one I'm a little bit kind of push and pull with, but it is definitely, I think, kind of creeping its way up to the top of my list. This one I think might be in the running for the one that I'm going to choose, which by the way, again, I'm, I have no idea which one I'm actually going to knit. I thought that I did until I sat down and put all these together and now I'm torn, <laughs> but I would say that this one is creeping up to the top of my list. So that's the gold dust jacket by Morale McCree. And it looks like it's going to cost about $9 on Ravelry. Next up, we've got the Maves jacket and this is by Amalie Narenz. I should note that on Instagram, this designer is Sharon's DK. And then when you're kind of looking that up on Ravelry, I wound up not finding what I was looking for. So I went back to her Instagram and then was able to link to her Ravelry, which is then under this name, Amalie Narenz. So if you're having some confusion finding those patterns, it looks like something was maybe changed along the way. So now you know. <laughs> This is a true jacket to me. It's called the Maves jacket. And again, we have one that has a more limited size range. This one does only come in three sizes with a range from about 35 and a half to 43 and a half inches or 90 to 110 centimeters. So limited size range, but this one really does have a true jacket look. It does include the sort of flap front pockets, which my jacket has here. And I do like that look. One of the other details that this one has that I really like is that it includes these sort of pleats on the sleeves like your typical shirt would have. So I thought that that was a really nice touch for this. And it says that this one is knit top down. I do feel like for this pattern. I like how all of the finishes have that really dense and refined look. So it does look like they're either double knit or maybe they're folded. I'm going to go with double knit as my best guess here, but I like the 
sort of like hardiness that that has in the finished object. I also do like the cut of this one, but I think this, contrary to the last pattern, might be a little bit too far cropped for my personal taste. Of course, that's something that we could change. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This one, this one just strikes me as a really classic bomber look. I think if this is done right, then it can look very chic and more streamlined than some of the others. Obviously, when you're talking about a shacket, you're talking about a more casual look. I wouldn't expect to wear a shacket like out to dinner, personally, unless we're going out for like burritos, then I'll wear my shacket. <laughs> but you know, if I'm getting dressed up, I'm not putting on my shacket. So typically words like streamline and sleek are not adjectives that I need to be involved with my shacket. But something that I like about this one that the others don't have is those factors. So I think if you're someone where a shacket just would not find a home in your wardrobe, then this would be a nice option to have something that's a little bit classier, a little bit more put together. I do feel like if this was knit in a really nice dark yarn and you wore it with, say, a white turtleneck and maybe a pair of like black leather pants. How cute would that be for a night out? Or even treat it almost like a leather jacket in the way that you're styling it. So you could definitely wear this one, I think, over maybe like a more casual dress or something, especially with being in the holiday season. I feel like something like this could really find a home in those dressier looks without actually going all the way into dressed up territory. So it has a coolness. Maybe that's what it is. This is just a coolness about it. <laughs> I think that this is a nice option. Like I said, I think it'd be a little bit more of a gamble, especially I should mention that they don't state the actual finished bust circumference. The numbers that I'm giving you were based on the math that I did after seeing the sort of schematic for the width of this card or of this jacket laying flat. So there's a little bit of sort of mistake mystery around this one, but it was just too spot on what I was looking for and not to share it. So that's the Maeve's jacket by Amalie Narenz. And it looks like that one's going to cost about $6.89 on Ravelry. All right. Now, if you're a knitter, <laughs> if you are in the fiber world, there's a good chance that you have seen Drops Yarn and Drops Design, also known as Garn Studio. I know that the Drops Design can be very polarizing for people in the knitting world, but I do feel like it's worth recognizing that they have a great source for free patterns. Um, albeit, if you've never followed a knitting pattern before and you're not sure why you should pay for a knitting pattern when you have options such as drops with their free pattern library. The, the difference is, first of all, when you're paying for a pattern, you're usually paying a designer directly for the work that they did, obviously, to design the pattern, as well as to have it graded in different sizes and check edited and all of those things. Whereas in this particular example drops design. It's basically them providing you free patterns as a company to sort of help promote selling their yarn to you. Um, so that's just one of the, the factors. But I think the number one thing that you might not know if you've never paid for a knitting pattern and you're not sure why you should is I've noticed a lot of the time, and, th and this isn't every situation, but when you're paying for a pattern, you're usually getting a better quality pattern. You're usually getting more references to different techniques that are happening within the pattern. Whereas typically, and specifically for these drops free patterns, it's kind of like, here's a bunch of numbers and instructions and you're on your own kid. And there are videos there, but it's a little bit more work to sort of decipher, not to mention the fact that as far as I know, they aren't available in a PDF download. Rather, you have to just keep referring to the website. So that's just something to keep in mind if you've never paid for a knitting pattern before. And maybe you're like, what the heck? Why would I do that? I have all these free patterns. I would suggest paying for a pattern and seeing what you think 
and you might be surprised by how much more clear it is or not. Maybe you've had really great success with free patterns. <laughs> but like I said, it is worth mentioning that this is a free pattern by Drops Design, and this is called the Camper's Comfort. This was actually the very first jacket pattern that I had found. We're talking way back when I first started knitting, and I thought, oh my gosh, I want to knit that. So I do think that this is a great representation of sort of where I got my idea with my blue, 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 blue clay boucle <laughs> where I got my inspiration with my boucle thrifted yarn and shack it and saw this and it all just looked like it came together. I, I think that the proportions in this design are particularly spot on for me. I, I like the idea of this just being oversized and not just the body, but also the arms, because that is something I've noticed with some of these other shacket patterns is that the arms are a little bit more slim. And personally, I wouldn't mind the whole thing kind of looking like I grabbed my boyfriend's jacket and threw it on. So this is also knit in a boucle yarn. It's a bulky weight. It looks like this one has a finished bust circumference ranging from about 38 to 57 inches, which is 96 to 144 centimeters. So this one has the, the pockets on the front, and this one has, I think, a bigger, wider collar than some of the other ones. And I think... If I had to guess, it's probably because you almost just need that weight to help it sit down properly. But I actually don't think that it's too exaggerated in this look. Now, this is another one that their size range is just listed in the schematic. So double check my math on that. But there are six sizes available. And this is another one that is knit in pieces and then seamed together. So I think while this pattern doesn't look like it includes it, similarly to the dawn to dusk shacket, I think when you're seaming up the sides, if you wanted to, you could also include some uh, in the, what are those called? Just the pockets in within the seams. I think that that would be a nice option for something like this. Yeah, I feel like I don't even have too much to say about this one other than the fact that it is kind of exactly what I'm looking for when it comes to a shacket pattern. And I think so far my only holdup in knitting this one is I think the fact that it's drops, which I don't want to hold against it, but I just know that people tend to not like the drops patterns. And I almost feel like I should just try it out to take one for the team here. Um, but you guys let me know what you think. Should should I go ahead and, and just give this a shot for my shacket? A shot for my shacket? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I just think that this, this is a good representation of what I was looking for. So tell me how you feel about a drops pattern. But otherwise, that's the Camper's Comfort by Drops Design. And of course, it is a free pattern on their website. Now, one of the stipulations I don't think I mentioned when it came to my shacket is I was really hoping to find something that was simple, stock in that. Um, I, I would like for this project to be something that can be one of my, I don't know, more basic, just sort of simple knitting options. And I, well, it's probably because it's boucle yarn, <laughs> so I don't exactly want to go ahead and do some textured pattern just to lose sight of the boucle. However, if I was not knitting in boucle and still wanted to make a shacket, I do think that this would be the pattern for me. This is called the Nomad Jacket by Wool and Beyond, and I don't know what it is about this one that just gives me the most I, I don't know. I was watching The Crown and I feel like this is that jacket that I would like to be wearing in the hills of Scotland while I am on my retreat from society. <laughs> I love the texture on this one. It is this little baby honeycomb and it has the most like delicious looking squish to it. I don't know. I want to grab this one and squeeze it. 
This pattern comes in eight sizes and it ranges from about 43 to 65 inches or 110 to 165 centimeters. Now, looking at this one, you can tell that it's a little bit different from the others and that it doesn't have that true shirt jacket look. This is really a jacket, but it just kept coming up and I was so intrigued by all of the details on this one. It doesn't have a collar, but I don't even think it needs one. I love all of the I-cord edging. I can appreciate the rounded hem on it. I think that that is, is true to a shacket pattern for me. And then I just love the, the contrast and the texture with all of the seams, how it, it looks, it looks so professional. <laughs> I can't guarantee mine would look like that, but I don't know. I just love, I love the look of this one. I do think it's really beautiful. And I think, again, if you are someone who's not interested in getting as dressed down as a shacket would be, then this would be a fantastic option to knit up a jacket this winter and have it as your sort of go-to for out in the garden or taking your dog for a walk. I could definitely picture this one being dressed up a little bit more if you did it in a little bit more of a saturated color. I'm picturing a navy or more of a true olive green and maybe adding a more bronze or gold button with that and then pairing it over top of a really crisp white button down shirt and some deep dark denim with a brown leather boot <laughs> some gold jewelry. I don't know. I think you could go like very expensive lady day off in this, or you could totally take it into running through the mud and like that gardening and more, like more lifestyle. I don't know. Can you tell like I have, this one gives me a feeling when I look at it and I don't think I get that a lot from knitwear. So I do think that this is just a gorgeous option. This one is also said it, this one also says that it, <laughs> it also says on Ravel, it also says on Ravelry that this one is knit from the top down. So definitely if that's more your speed, then this looks like a good option for you. So that's Wool and Beyond's Nomad Jacket, and you can pick that pattern up on Ravelry for about eight bucks. Reading the name of this next pattern, I just realized that I already mixed it up with one of the others. The names of these two, I don't know why in my head I cannot get them straight. So we've already talked about the gold dust jacket. And now we're talking about the dawn to dusk jacket. So I apologize because I know I've already referenced the wrong one. <laughs> This pattern came highly recommended from all of you. It is a pattern by Tiffany Ty. And basically the first time I mentioned I wanted to knit a shacket, everyone came out of the woodworks like totally, totally repping Tiffany Ty. So Tiffany, you've got some fans out there. And little did they know it was already at the top of my list. <laughs> so this one definitely epitomizes what I was looking for in a shacket. You guys could tell too, it has all of those little details, all of those little features that a shirt would have. Specifically, it's got the double knit button band and that rounded hem that I just think is so on point for a shacket. I also really like the proportion of the collar on this one. I think that this does look like it's going to have a nice sort of density to it and therefore be pretty sturdy up there. I think that's the issue, right? When you're knitting a collar, you don't want it to be like floppy and floating away. And you also don't want this situation to be happening. You really want something that knows how to lay flat. So it looks like from this pattern that that is exactly what you'd get. It says that this is knit in a worsted weight and there are nine sizes available. You've got a range from 28 to 62 inches, which is also about 71 to 158 centimeters. So a great size range there. I couldn't see specifically on the Ravelry page anywhere if it said that the edging is an I-cord, um, but it does have a really nice refined look to it like an I-cord would have. I can't tell if that's being done by just seaming the edges down or with an actual I-cord. But that is one of the things that I like about this. I think that's part of what's giving it the most true to a button-up shirt is all of the edging details. 
And I think specifically where the sort of body of this jacket meets the button placket, there's that really nice crisp difference where you can see that those are two separate things. And I think it really does sell that this is a shacket. This is another one that I feel like I would want to knit the body just a touch shorter. And I mean, just a little bit, just to avoid it kind of hanging and giving more of a shirt dress look to it. But again, I think that's just one of those things that the difference in the fabric I would get with my boucle knitting a pattern like this would already provide it with that much more stability. It also says that this one is knit top down. And I think that though this one doesn't appear to be pieced, I could, if I wanted those in the seam pockets, knit it top down and then almost as if I was going to do a split hem, maybe I could split uh, the sides and then seam them with the pocket later on if I wanted to be that brave. <laughs> Another detail I really like about this one is that on the back, it does have that sort of typical seam going across the broad part of the back where you would have your like double layer of the shirt on the back <laughs> and then the rest of the shirt going on. To me, that's a really indicative detail in a men's shirt or jacket, which this whole thing is being based off of. It also looks like, however, the cuffs on the sleeves are finished, have at least a similar sort of vibe where it might not be pleated, but the way that it's knit does give it that true sort of shirt, shirt look about it. So this is again, one of those patterns at the top of my list, and that is the Dawn to Dusk Jacket by Tiffany Ty on Ravelry. It says that you could purchase this pattern for about $9.18. If you've seen my pattern roundups before, then you might know that I like to include at least a pattern that you should have on your radar. And that's just a pattern that's maybe not out yet. And it's actually coming out soon, this one, in the next release of the Lina magazine. And this is called the Betula? Betula? I'm going to call it the Betula. Betula by Jacqueline Van Dillen. And if we're talking a jacket that isn't too casual, this is the one. And it's kind of comical. I love looking at the sort of finished object photos for these pieces that they publish in the magazines uh, because they, they really set the scene of where you're going to be wearing this garment. And I love that this girl has the most beautiful lace work knit jacket on in the pottery studio, <laughs> you know, for all of the times that you want to be wearing your hand knits around a pottery wheel. So again, if you're someone who's feeling like the whole jacket thing is reading a little bit too casual for your personal style, then this would be a really great option. It truly is a cardigan with buttons, but it does have a collar and this one features beautiful lace work on it. It says that this is knit up in a DK weight yarn with a size ranging from about 37 to 64 inches or 93 to about 162 centimeters. And like I said, this is going to be in the next publication of Lina magazine, which is going to come out, I think it says December 8th. So I don't have too, too much information on this one, nor do I have a ton of examples, but I just thought thought that this one was too beautiful, not to mention. I love the details of all of that lace work, but also all of the little ribbed details on this one really do make it have just a little bit of that extra special texture to it that I love. I also really like that they chose to knit this particular version in a more tweed yarn, which I don't know, it's just kind of giving it that little extra cottagey vibe to it. Yeah, I don't know. I just really like the the sort of overall look that this one has to it. It also says that this is one that's knit flat and then seamed after. So it should have that extra stability and sturdiness to it that you'll own it for the rest of your life. So that's the Betula by Jacqueline Van Dillen, and it's going to be in that next uh, publication of Lina Magazine. To round out this list of 10 jacket patterns, the 10th one that I'm going to mention is probably the most popular of the ones that I have brought to you here today, and that is the Miles Shirt Jacket by Ozetta Haley Smedley. 
And this is a jacket that I just see keep popping up over and over again. It's available in nine sizes with a finished bust circumference of around 33 to 60 inches or 81 to 152 centimeters. And I think, again, this is one that truly does have that shirt look to it, with the exception of a few details. And those few details are the ones that are kind of holding me back and making me pump the brakes a little bit, even though I did think originally this would be the one I would knit. So for me, really the biggest hang up is the collar, how it's a standing collar, where I do really want something that's going to fold. Personally, if the collar is standing, I know I'm not going to wear it. It's just like a sensory thing that I can't have that on my neck. It'll drive me absolutely insane. So I'm just not so sure how comfortable I would be in adapting this pattern to have that folded collar. And that was basically what had me kind of looking at it again and saying, well, what is it then about this that I'm like, I wanna knit this except for the collar. And the reality is the reason I like this one so much, I think, is the fabric. Now, this is knit up in an unspun yarn, and so it does have that sturdiness to it that unspun wool has, especially when held double like it is here. I also do really like the pockets on the outside of this one, and again, we have that rounded edge that I just think my jacket needs. <laughs> it says that this one is knit top down, and if you're not using that unspun yarn, it is an Aran weight. So really, I guess I'm trying to decide if I love the look of this one because of the design details or do I love it because of the fabric? Because I know what my fabric is going to be. I know that I'm going to be holding boucle double and I know the sort of density that I'll be getting with that. So I'm not sure that I need to knit this pattern in order to achieve the look that I'm going for. And that was when I sort of, I sort of started to question which pattern I'd really be going for. So if you couldn't tell already, I do feel like I am torn between the Miles shirt jacket, the Dawn to Dusk jacket, and the Gold Dust jacket. <laughs> I think those are the ones that are really kind of calling my name. And at this point, I think that I just need to decide which is going to be the closest to the gauge that I'm getting with the fabric I already know I want. And then which has the, the most accurate details to what I'm thinking? Or am I going to pull a Franken sweater move to kind of grab the pieces from all of these patterns that I'm loving? and and knit that one? Or am I gonna throw it all out the window and just like gamble with the drops thing? I don't know, guys. <laughs> I'm feeling very torn on this, but let me wrap this up with, that's the Miles Shirt Jacket by Ozetta Haley Smedley, and it's about $6.50 on Ravelry. So those are the 10 jacket patterns that I've pulled for you today. You know that I'm looking for something that is a very simple stockinette to make sure that my boucle yarn really does shine. And I do want a folded collar as well as any other little shirt-like details that I could find in a knitting pattern. So if you have a recommendation outside of what I've brought you here today, definitely let me know down below. Like I said, if you're interested in knitting something that is reminiscent of a jacket, shirt jacket style, and you didn't see one here today that really spoke to you, I highly recommend going over to Ravelry and I'll link it down below the bundle that I've just been collecting patterns in. And you let me know, what do you guys think that I should knit? What would you prefer to see me knit? Because I wouldn't mind letting that sway my decision a little bit here. Let me know what you guys think I should do. Which shacket should be the shacket for me? <laughs> if you like this style of video, definitely let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And while you're at it, you might as well subscribe and ring the bell, all those things that YouTube really likes. If you are someone who enjoys knitting content, then you could definitely hang out with me on Saturday mornings at 9.30 a.m. when I post my weekly knitting podcast. And otherwise, if you're interested in seeing more from me, then go ahead and follow me over on Instagram at aka Nora Knits. All that being said, big ol' thanks for watching, you guys. I will catch you on the next one. That's kind of it. All right. Bye!